This is Siam Tanda Nyulu, an activist and a journalism student. Being a radical activist, I think that you are willing to sacrifice. You sacrifice your body, sacrifice your emotional health, like sacrifice your physical health because there was days when during the protest that I didn't eat. You know, I didn't go to the dining halls. I was just sitting here singing and all that stuff. There were times where I would sleep at Uhuru, like sleep and then wake up, check social media, what's going on. Like, I, I didn't have time for food. I didn't have time to speak about how I'm feeling because we didn't have any debriefing session. So I feel like being a radical means sacrificing your emotional, physical, and being on the ground, be, be ready for anything that is coming. So I, I am a radical. A lot was said and shared on the web during the Fees Must Fall protest, the motto being, the revolution shall be tweeted. Social media was used as a platform of mutual solidarity and a means of updating the public. Biologically, men are seen to possess more power, which immediately qualifies them as leaders. We have become accustomed to men taking the forefront in protest action, but in 2015, we saw a change where women have assumed the role of leaders. I don't feel intimidated by being surrounded by guys and being like a girl leading all these students and all that stuff. I think that it's not important your gender. What is important is what you're saying to the people and, and, and how the people are going to interpret it to benefit all of us who is affected by it. According to Sia, people at the forefront of any movement should be those affected by it, regardless of gender and sexual orientation. Um, for me personally, I didn't have a problem with, like, I didn't even, even put it in my mind that I'm actually this, this lesbian person in France and I'm this female in France because I grew up with boys. So I don't feel intimidated by being surrounded by men or guys and all that stuff. Her high school years were spent indulging in activities that allowed her to realize her voice. She recalls these years as her most rebellious. Despite being offered the opportunity to attend a prestigious private school, she was later faced with the dilemma of not being able to afford school fees to sustain her till the very end. This then sparked her radicalism in politics of education. Siamtanda Nyulu shows no sign of backing out. Her fighting spirit will forever be activated. The fight is not over, hey? We can't say that we are done protesting. No, we can't. Because there are many issues here at Rhodes. And, and I feel like what works with Rhodes is protesting. There's more to come.